account manager with Run Sign Up, and you're in the email marketing session, so you're going to learn about email marketing, whether you like it or not. Because you're here. So, fun fact uh, there were 154 million emails sent through email marketing through Run Sign Up from the 20,000 races that are on our system since July of last year, which is a lot. So a lot of clients are using our email marketing to talk to their participants, get information, give information, things like that. So these are the things that we're going to go over today, um, setting up email marketing, sending emails, utilizing our template tools, um, automated emails, and then etiquette and how to um, enhance your deliverability of your emails, which I know is a big thing for everyone. So the first place you start to when getting your email marketing tools ready is the general settings. You have to set everything up. Uh, I really wanted the Black Eyed Peas song. Let's get it started in here, but Jordan told me no. <laughs> um, so to get to your email settings, you go to your race dashboard, email marketing, manage email settings. And I'm definitely getting in the way of the screen, so y'all are welcome to yell at me if I do. And you can't see anything. Um, so you'll want to set up your send address. Um, by default, it's your race name, but you can make that whatever you would like. Um, you can make it a person's name, your own name, or whatever you'd like. Um, the email address also defaults to the email address that you set in the race wizard. And that's the reply to. Um, so you can also change that if you have a specific info email address that you want to use um, or anything along those lines. We also have options for simple white labeling and advanced white labeling, and we'll go over those in just a second. So, white labeling actually masks run sign up to make it look like the emails are coming from your organization. Um, we actually offer three types of white labeling. So, we have no white labeling, which means that we send the email on your behalf that comes from run sign up. We have simple white labeling, which means that you are sending it, but there's no authorization. So, some servers say, eh, no, um, we can't accept this, they'll send it to spam because it's uh, basically masking or fake masking. Um, and then we have advanced white labeling. So you're sending the email from your own domain. The domain can be verified um, because it's yours, you own it. Um, and that offers the best deliverability if you want to mask your emails. What's, nope. What's the advantage of masking? So the deliverability really um, for white labeling, it's like if you're sending it from, so you can it's from runsignup.com versus from your domain. If you own your own domain, it's generally a good idea to set up white labeling. It only takes about five or 10 minutes. Uh, really the only requirement is you need to have somebody who has access to update your DNS settings. Uh, basically you go into the advanced white labeling and says, hey, put these in your DNS settings. Um, so just access those, put those settings in that we give you from that page. And you can turn it on. Um, it allows the emails to come from your domain, so it's you know your domain at, and then uh, try to at your domain uh, dot com or whatever your uh, thing is there. And it really it improves the deliverability because it's coming from your address. It's fully authorized and it's coming from that specific your domain as opposed to coming from run sign up. Um, so it's a, again just sort of all of the, the links in the email and the branding in the email, it all matches the domain that it's coming from. So as consistent as the email can be, it, it does help. Um, our regular uh, deliverability is still very good, uh, but if you just want that extra kick or if you know, people know you or have your race as a contact, um, it can just kind of give it that extra little bit if you want to can you, Are you allowed to set it up for like two different mail deliveries? So if we use constant contact, can we white label that and white label this? Or? Uh, you wouldn't be able to do constant contact white labeling through us. This is really just kind of through our system. Why well, not? But can, on your on your your domain record, your MX thing. So you, you have you would have to have control of the domain you want to white label, right? Because uh, basically, if you're sending something at constant contact, you have to constant contact would have to update their DNS settings to do the white labeling, which they're not going to do. Um, it's also like you can't white label like a Gmail account because you can't contact Google and say, "Hey, I need you to add these DNS records to for me." Uh, that stuff's just not going to work. So the white labeling settings are really for when you own your own domain and you want to get that extra little deliverability kick. You can set up the white labeling, uh, but it does require you to have your own domain. Uh, but if you do, then you can really just set up that in a couple of minutes as long as you have somebody who has access. Okay. So now that everything is set up, that's pretty much what you have to set up um, in the beginning. You want to actually send emails. Um, so 
You can create email lists and select recipients. Um, this is a huge benefit of using Run Sign Up over other email marketing systems uh, because this is directly integrated with your race data. It's updated to the minute, so you can spend like six hours crafting an email. Hopefully, you don't spend that long, but maybe you are spending six hours crafting an email and send it, and it gets all of those participants, including the ones who registered while you were working on it. Um, so let's understand emails. You can create different lists. So I've got. I'm a Game of Thrones fan, so got custom lists for the different Game of Thrones areas. Um, you know, I'm kind of stabbed over, but it's fine. Um, and you can add or exclude specific lists. So you can send to current participants, you can send to just the 5K if you need to update them on anything, um, and exclude certain lists. So creating custom lists, um, this is under email marketing manage lists. Um, we've got a few options, so you can use run sign-up contacts that are in the system. Um, you can upload your own, if you have a CSV file of, um, you know, an email list that you have from another system or something like that, um, you can actually upload the contacts. Do you make, do you make if you upload, like, say, transition over from a different platform, do you make them double opt-in when they upload them into your software? You should not make them opt-in, no. Mm -hmm. You can upload the list. Um, we'll go into some of the etiquette on list management, best practices, a couple of the slides, um, but yeah, we don't require people to opt in when you uh, upload your contents. Um, and just to confirm, we do not ever sell spam or solicit to your runners. Yep. So if you have you know, a hundred thousand runner list from you know ten years of race history, and you want to put in your run sign up. It's your data. We're not touching it, so you don't have to be scared to do that. Yeah. So, with their, if I uploaded a bunch of emails, and then I've said I want to exclude uh, current registrations, does it tag? Does it, what does it use to identify the person? Just just an email address, or is there any other identification? So used to uh, the email system is actually uh, pretty smart as far as it goes with uh, our tag replacements and certain values. And so I'm going to say it depends. Okay. Uh, if you send an email out and that email does not use any of our replacement tags and the only thing in that email is an email address, it will deduplicate on the email address. Okay. So if somebody's being excluded and you don't use any custom tags and that email is on the excluded list, that person will not receive the email. Um, on the other hand, say you go in and you're sending out an email and you're using the first name and last name tags. Uh, this is particularly important for races because say like I'm putting in a link, like a replacement tag that links to somebody's registration to edit their registration and I want to send out an email. Well, if the family of four all signed up at the same email address, I don't want to deduplicate that because I want them to get all four copies of that email with the link to each registration. Um, and if we were to deduplicate it based on just email address, then they'd only get one copy and they wouldn't be able to edit the other ones. So it's a pretty smart deduplication process and exclude. So it's basically if the name or if the tags you use and the email address being sent to are a match, then it will exclude. Great. Okay. And we'll go over replacement tags. <coughs> and then you can uh, you have existing <coughs> custom contacts. Andrew Burke mentioned the uh, unsubscribe or the etiquette with that. Um, so if you are adding emails from another race to the race, um, make sure to check the unsubscribe list and clean those emails out. Um, the unsubscribes are on a race by race basis. So if someone unsubscribes from one race, it's not going to exclude them from all of the emails. Um, so if they unsubscribe from one race, email list only to be added to another, they're going to get pretty frustrated. So just make sure uh, there's a report to find that. Uh, make sure you clean out those lists that unsubscribes when you're if you're uploading. You can also add people back in from those lists mm -hmm. because I had a race director the other day go, I'm not getting any of my test emails and I was like, you unsubscribe yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it happened more than we would expect. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have a MailChimp integration if you currently use MailChimp. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on this, but if you do have questions where you want, um, you can either chat your AM or you can chat with me later, because um, there are some limitations with that. But we're talking about run set. Okay. So when you are um, creating your email, there are email settings. So name this email. It's how you identify it. You might be sending out three bib reminder emails, and if all the subject lines are, here's your bib number, you're not going to know which email is which. So that is just, it. the name of this email is just internal for you to know, oh, that's this email. Um, email subject line, 
Everyone knows what an email subject line is. Um, but we do have some kind of suggestions. Uh, they should be short and catchy, so people will want to open the email. Um, they can tease what's inside, so big deals coming or, you know, um, act now or register now, things like that. Get people to click the email to open it. Um, any words like update or newsletter um, are typically associated with a series of emails, so people are less likely to open those because they'll be like, oh, I'll just catch the next one. If it's a newsletter, it should come out monthly, weekly, however. Um, so kind of avoid using those in your email subject lines. Um, also, we cannot have emojis in subject lines, so that has been requested um, before. And then don't use all caps or exclamation points. Um, these tend to um, be typical spam emails. What did you say? Annoying. Well, yes. We need to hit on that and the run sign up 101, which half of you were in. Uh, don't name your race either, like all caps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> grammar, grammar, please. A little bit yes. Um, and then we also have scheduling options. So if you know that you want to send, I keep using bib email, but you know you want to send a bib email the week before the race, you can actually go ahead, craft the email, get everything ready, and schedule it to send whenever you would like. I think typically, when did, typically like 10 a.m.? Yeah, 10 a.m. Most of the automated ones go out. Yeah. People Does, are getting in and trying to progress things to check your email. Does yeah. the run sign up system not support emoji usage, or do you not support it because other email servers don't support it? We don't or support do it in the subject it? line. Um, so to be frank, we have um, the, the initial design was probably about five, six years ago for our email system. Um, some of the databases just gotten very large, and so in order to without being too technical, in order to update things to be able to support that, we have a pretty big thing to run that through. So we're just now, we are looking at doing sort of an upgraded email system in the next year or two. So we're going to kind of take some of the lessons learned from this process over the last few years. We've added on a large number of features as they've been requested over the time, and that's going to be one of those when we get to that. Um, but it would just be kind of difficult to upgrade the existing system to support it, so it's probably going to be on the next round. But they can be used in the body of the email. But they can be in the body, yes. Yep. Okay. So how many of you guys have email on your phone? All of you, probably. I do, as well. Um, how many of you guys check your email first thing in the morning when you wake up? Because I definitely do. So, in general, 77% of email opens take place on mobile. Most of my email opens take place on mobile as well, which is why making your emails optimized for mobile is extremely important. So because of that, we do have a run sign-up template that is fully mobile responsive, supports the use of social media links, um, and it also reflects your new, your race website. So it's automatically branded, um, the color scheme, everything's there. You have the option to up or to change that if you want um, based on you know, the type of email that you're sending. But we do recommend the run sign template because it is automatically mobile responsive. And since most people check their email on their phone, that's very, very, very important. Um, we still have a legacy template, past version of our email template. It's available if you like that one. We still have that free to use. Um, we also have a blank template. And that is, if you know HTML or you already have a template from a MailChimp or something like that, um, you can actually copy that source code, paste it into run sign up, and use your own template that you are used to, like, enjoy. And I, we'll see if this video works. Because this is how. Oh. I hope it's a good video. So this is kind of showing you how you'd create a blank template. I just named the template. And then there's a source code button. And you can just paste the source code in. Click OK. And there's my template. So now you have your email content. You can see the list of temp or there is a list of templates that you can choose from. Um, by default, the run sign up tempo template will load. When you're creating templates, you can choose what you want, if you want that template to be the default, so whichever template you create to be the default. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, you can add content by typing directly onto the template, write your email message, send it out. You can use the edit bar at the top to format your email, change the font, change bold, all that. You guys have seen that when creating race websites, it's the same. 
Um, and then we have replacement tags. You can kind of see those at the bottom. This personalizes your emails. Um, this also helps with deliverability. So you can say, hi, percent, first name, percent, and it will automatically populate their first name. So it seems more, it seems a lot more personal to them. It also, in uh, first example of having the family of four, it also will let them know, you know, whose email is for who, what information is for who. Um, so we, I always, always, always recommend replacement tags. Um, and it's also a simple way to do a mail merge. So you can get all that information. There's a huge list of replacement tags that we have that you can use. These are the most common. So first name, I always say, there's no reason that you shouldn't say, hi, first name, to make it personal. If for some reason you don't have a participant's first name, if you imported the data and you just have their last name, it will um, just be blank. So you can say hello and it would still make sense. Um, bib number, if you're sending out bib numbers, we can actually auto-populate the bib number into the email. Um, giveaway, this is also important if you're um, sending out emails that allows people to double check their, if you're giving out a t-shirt, it allows them to double check their t-shirt size. And so before you, you know, before you guys make your order, if they want to make a change, they can either email you and say, hey, I want to change it, or if you have um, giveaway management, they can go in and change it before you guys make your orders. Um, so the edit registration, like an edit registration URL, the link will basically just be, it's a button without a button, um, that just says edit registration that you can click on within the email. The URL, if you know HTML and want to create a button around um, the edit registration <coughs> URL, that's what you would use the edit registration URL and build your HTML around it to create a button or insert kind of picture or something. Um, and then the referral code, if you have referrals turned on, um, you can actually include their referral code link in an email that you send automatically. So you don't have to sit there and search and try to figure it out. You can just add the replacement tag. It'll automatically pull it in. So now you can send your emails. Um, so we have three options here. You can save it as a draft. So if you're still working or you got to run off to a meeting, you can save it as a draft, come back to it whenever you get a chance. Um, there's a manage your emails um, menu item, and that's where those drafts will live. Uh, send a test email. So always send yourself a test email before sending out a mass email to make sure that it looks okay, everything's right. Check it on your phone. Check it on a desktop. If you have an iPad, check it on an iPad just to make sure that everything looks the way you want it to look and gets the messaging out that you intend to get out. Because there's... You know, nothing worse than sending out an email and realizing that you, you know, did something wrong. Test emails will not include replacement tag data. So if you want to do that, um, you can actually import yourself as a special list um, with the information that you are, like, you wanted to send out a test a bib email. You can import your name, your email address, the bib, and uh, map it and then send yourself a test email that way. Um, send yourself an actual email, make yourself the only one on the list. But that test email will not include replacement tag data. It will just have the code for the replacement tag. So you can see where that information would be. If you want to see how it populates, um, create yourself as a special list. Um, and then send email. When you want to send your email, you can click send. And if it's scheduled, it'll go out at scheduled time. Or if you're sending it immediately, there you go. Um, and then once send is clicked, a confirmation will pop up, letting you know the number of recipients that are in the list, uh, the number of duplicates that are removed, um, excluded recipients, and it'll show you a preview of the email, so that way you can see it before you send it. So it's really a two, it's a confirmation. The schedule time, is it just a static time, like Eastern time, or is it the time for that person? It's going to be the time of the race, so if you okay. set your race to be central time zone and you put the time in, it'll be that time at yep. central time. And this one's Jordan. So Jordan's going to talk about automated emails. I'm making you work. I was hoping this would be automated for me. Nope. Automated emails, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Um, these are actually a great tool. Um, I'm not sure how many people have utilized these in the past, but uh, to be incomplete registrations, registration follow ups, price increases, race joy, and sponsors, um, you can get a lot of your work taken care of by just flipping the switch. Incomplete registration emails, really, really cool tool. 
Um, what you can do with this is essentially, say people start to register for your events, and for whatever reason they <laughs> fall off that transaction, they get busy and have to depart halfway through that checkout card, or oh, I better stop, I gotta call the wife and see if her calendar's clear. So we drop all those and capture that data, and they get put in this little incomplete registration report. You guys can check it out any time. If you've never seen this report, you have it. It's, it's there, it exists, we can show it to you later. But if you flip this switch, you can simply fire off an email. You can choose how many days after they incomplete that registration to kick that email out. And what this will do is it checks and says, oh, okay, it's three days have gone by. They still have not come back and completed that registration. And then this email will fire off automatically at whatever time you guys choose. You can um, view the email. So once you click yes and save it, then you're going to be able to actually go in here to the view. And we've already templated it. It's got your banner image on there. Your sponsors are in there and everything. So it's like literally you can just sit enable and save it. And this thing will do its job. Um, you're welcome to customize it a little bit more if you like. You can add extra intervals. So maybe three days and then maybe 15 days or something. Don't get crazy and send them like every day. Um, yeah. Um, yes, list will scrub once that person registers, provided they register with the same account they started to do the uh, email up or the, the initial transaction with. And then you can also scrub the email yourself. So most of the time you'll find yourself in there if because everybody here when they create a race tests their own registration. So you will find yourself in that list. <laughs> None of you would not do that. Um, so yeah, don't know where to Quick question. Um, if the race sells out in that interval, will it still send them to them? It will not. There's several checks in place to make sure that registration is open and active so you can, registration is still valid before it sends out an incomplete. Um, so basically, they'll always be able to register if that incomplete goes out or at the time it goes out. Um, one other thing, just to kind of mention quickly, the first option here is the intervals. This follows an individual basically saying, say, three days after I fail to complete the registration, send something out. Five days afterwards, I send something out. All of the automated emails are set up with the same basic setup, but there's an interval, which is basically a certain amount of time or days, either before or after a certain figure, depending on the email. Then they also have a calendar date option. So one of the things I, can, I would recommend doing here is you set up, say, follow, send a follow-up email, you know, three days afterwards, and then a week afterwards after that person. But then you can go in and you can say on a calendar, the week before my race, send out a blast to everyone. So that interval is always watching that specific participant and saying follow that participant, that interval for them. The calendar date will go to everybody who matches on that list and it's basically the same for both for all of the automated email setups. So it's a really nice way to go in and say, let me follow up with you three days afterwards, let me follow up with you again, one week afterwards, and then three days before the race, Everyone who hasn't gotten it, let me send out one more blast after that. <coughs> so that's kind of the difference between the intervals and the calendar dates. So how exactly is it? Is it just identifying people by their run sign up account? So let's say a husband and wife. Husband goes, he's going to sign up, stops. Next day, wife signs both of them up from her account. It does it based off of an email address. Okay. Um, and so, and we won't send multiple incompletes to the same email address. We do smart. We do strict duplication on the incompletes. So, if you try and sign up four people with the same email address, you're not going to get four incomplete registration emails. You'll get the one. But if I were to start a registration and I was to use my email address and my wife's email address in there, so we have two separate email addresses in the incomplete report, we would send out an email to each of them separately. And then, once that email is identified as a registrant, then that. That we no longer send to that, regardless of that, how many come on. And if I understand you correctly, you can do both. That, mm -hmm. uh, that three days after and a calendar day. Right. And that's usually, like I recommend, that's one of my favorite settings. Do the individual follow ups afterwards, but then send out one mass email to everybody who hasn't. So, you know, somebody who started two months ago who never came back, you may as well ping them one more time right before the end of the race. Uh, one of the things you can do with these emails, so when you set that default template, so you say send this email or use this template by default uh, when you're going to send emails, like when you customize your templates, whatever email you set as your default is the template that we will use for the automated emails. So that's where we're going to go in. When you're editing that template, there's going to be a tag in there that says automated email text. 
that text is where we will put in the content of the automated email for that template so you can kind of play around with that. It's usually just right in the body of the email, probably leave it where it is, but that's what that automated email text tag is. It's basically saying when we send these, that's where the content of the email is going to go. Um, so you can always go through there and set up um, that template so you make sure you know kind of what it is, what you're sending. When you go into one of these templates to check it, like if you're automating, we get creative with your template, with your follow-up emails. Uh, so like maybe you do that calendar date email, and this is my last push for my incomplete registrants. I'm going to include like a coupon code in it, or like the first email three days out, I'm not including a coupon code. Seven days out, I'm including a coupon code. So you can kind of get the like, farther down with your campaign you go. Like you give them an incentive to come back. Um, so you just kind of get creative with your marketing as far as like what promotions you're using and what your messaging is here for this one. Yes, um, I have. We have both the um, incomplete registration email set up as well as the price jump emails. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if it be duped across both of those because I'm wondering if someone comes in and starts a registration but doesn't finish it like two days before the price jump, and we're sending out a price jump reminder email. Do they get the price jump reminder email and the Incomplete registration email, or does it be do across both? So it would depend on sort of the timing there. So if they sign up and they're incomplete, if they haven't completed the registration, um, so they're going to be on that incomplete registration email list. So if they, sorry, they start registration and then they get the price increase email in the meantime and they register before that, they'll have registered, so they've come off of that incomplete email list. So that incomplete email list will always check to see if somebody's registered before sending to them. Okay. Um, but the lists are separate, so if they happen to trigger both, they can happen to trigger both. Okay. Um, we don't sort of exclude to say you're getting this automated email, so you're not allowed to get the other automated email. We have plenty of deduplication checks and stuff inside of the same email groups to make sure that the same the same automated email isn't triggered multiple times for the same participant, <coughs> but we can't really do that across all the different emails. Okay, and then back, the second, oh sorry, go ahead. No, is it, back to your question. Then what does the computer do? Is it charging for the uh, extra fee? Does it increase the price? Or it for the well, price the, price is, the price setting is going to be whatever it is when they come to the race to register. So if they get an incomplete registration email and they come in and the price hasn't jumped up yet, they'll pay the price that hasn't increased. If they get the price, and if they come back after the price increase, they'll get the price increase. The email has no bearing on no, the we'll the computer what's the price. So in other words, I signed up on the 5th and the price goes up on the 10th, but I didn't finish it by the 10th. But I started on the 5th. Do I get the 5th price or do I get the 10th price? The 10th. Oh, you get the 10th. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, price increase emails. It's kind of, not to beat the dead horse here, um, essentially what we're talking about. Same thing with the incompletes. You can automate the system, set your dates, add intervals. The templates are the same to set all these things up. So, and again, if you're just creating a race for the first time on run sign up or any, any of your races, really, I think both of these should just simply be checked yes, and then go about your day. If you're not going to put any more time into it, at least this is taken care of. Because as a race director, I always forgot to send out my price increase emails, and those are one of the largest ways to bump participation. Typically, once that email goes out, it's like a Thursday and Friday of a price increase weekend, you're going to see just a huge chunk. Um, that would be about 20% of my reg. Yep. Why do, you, why do you send them both the current path? Or if they already signed up, why do they care about a price? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the, word, the emails are actually worded differently. So if you're registered for the race, you're going to get a different email, but that says more like, hey, thanks for already being registered for our race. Tell your friends the price is about to go up. So it's, it's also clear. a potential hook if you're using our referral rewards programs and our marketing. Those emails are smart enough to detect the fact that you turn those settings and those systems on. So when you send out that email, it's going to say, this is a reminder, hey, when you tell your friends about this price increase next week, as a reminder, here's your referral registration code. So they are two separate emails, and they're going to go out with different messaging for each of those batches, but they're saying, being able to include those referral coupons and stuff to your current participants is just another incentive for them to go out and get their friends to sign up. Man, that's a great feature. How much does that cost? <laughs> Registration follow emails. Yes, my ratings were deleted out of most of the presentation, but those are my three ideas. Um, 
You can use this for so many different things um, for registration follow up. Essentially, we're going to kick out an email X amount of days after somebody's registered. Um, typically, you want to give it a little bit of time because you know they just registered for your race, they got a confirmation email, maybe a team email, and then some other things. So, um, give it a little bit of time. But this is really cool. So, if you're doing whether you're doing Facebook referrals, if you're doing um, fundraising, donation teams, or anything, you can create these emails. To simply say, you know, hey, thanks again for registering and joining a fundraising team. Don't forget, here's your link to your fundraising page to share on Facebook with your friends. Um, same as the Facebook referral. Don't forget to share this with your friends and get, you know, 20 bucks back on your registration. So that's a whole other topic, but you can really utilize these, set them out, again, set it, forget it once it's done, and they can do some really good marketing work for you guys as long as you put in the time in the beginning to turn this stuff on, and then it will just do it. So, can I ask a question real quick? Um, so if you're having a relay team, and so the person needs to get, you know, whoever else is on the relay, uh, can you do an automated so you don't have to remember to remind them, you know, hey, the race is in a week and you still don't have a partner? Uh, right. Don't have quite that level of logic. Um, but again, so part of the things you've probably all heard from the talk about our CRM system and how we're going to be sort of expanding on that. What we're eventually going to be doing is connecting the CRM system into the next generation of emails. So right now we have custom lists and some options that we commonly use, like current participants, previous participants, or people on certain teams or captains. So you can go into our system and you can set up a rule to say, like right now, I'm going to create a custom list and it's going to go out to all team captains. And you can say, send out a reminder to all team captains that they have to have a full team. We don't have the extra logic of saying that aren't full. Right? So like that list isn't quite there. But eventually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making it easier for you to create these custom lists because we're going to be able to export the list from CRM or to save searches in the CRM. And then you can be able to use those lists to pipe into a newer email system uh, and be able to kind of do those types of searches and we'd be able to pull that all together. Um, right now, most of those options, if you go in and create a custom list, there's that first option, run sign up lists. Um, that's where you'll see, depending on the options your race has turned on, like if you have volunteers or teams and stuff, you'll have options to say, send to all teams or send to the team captains or specific teams on the list. Um, so you can kind of set up through that. So you can make it set it and forget it that way, really? Yes. So you can say, set up you know, te all, all teams, captains, get an email to send out one week before the race, double check and make sure you have a full team. It's going to go to all team captains, but it's still a nice reminder. Yeah. Yeah. And if, I mean, if, if you guys are, if some of you still using like constant contact or something like that and paying for that service, odds are you can probably, if you're not like diehard married to constant contact, we can probably do everything that you need inside of our system. And again, we're doing it for free. I, I, mean, I had one marathon, they were paying 250 bucks a month, and they literally just sent a couple emails a year. And I was like, just do this. And so it was like, you know, instant savings for the race. So utilize us, please. It's free. So I was having problems with people, like, you know, we were sending out the, you know, price increase and da da da. And then people would unsubscribe, but then they weren't getting my race day um, email and stuff about road closures and how to get into parking and stuff because they were unsubscribed from my race email list. Correct. So that's something where you might want to check your list and say, you know, hey, just to make sure we can't send you any more emails if you want to do this. Because it's we don't get a ton of unsubscribes. I mean, if you're, you know, if you've got a thousand person race, do you say you get 10 unsubscribes typically? No, so a couple of just quick touch points here. Again, some of the lessons learned over the course of this, you said we did our initial design on this about five or six years ago. You know from that we're constantly refreshing and going up for the next update. So this will be getting a bit of a facelift in a little while. But really with that, you're saying your marketing emails, if they'll be unsubscribed from a marketing email, that they're not going to get the race communication. That is the case. There's not a lot we can do about that right now. So you just want to be careful with some of that. Usually a price increase email or two is not that big of a deal when you're sending it out. But you don't want to mass send all of your marketing emails from your race and hit people constantly, 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 because they will unsubscribe. Uh, I'm just going to say, we really take a lot of care, and I'm going to jump a little bit into the etiquette and deliverability here with the unsubscribes, is that the unsubscribes are on a race by race basis. So, you know, if somebody unsubscribes from your, from one of your competitors' races or another race in your area, that they're not also going to unsubscribe from your race. 
And, you know, that's a pretty complicated, complex system for us to make sure that we kind of keep those unsubscribes siloed between those events. Uh, but there are that sort of a caveat to it is that if they unsubscribe from one of your racist emails, they don't get the other. Uh, next, eventually, what we will be doing is having like a promotional type. We'll be able to say that this is a promotional email or this is a race communication type email. And so they might be able to unsubscribe from a promotional email, but not from a, uh, a race communication. Uh, for those of you who have uh, partner accounts and run sign up, you can use that. I always recommend sending marketing emails from the partner account. Uh, you can send from that, and that's used as your marketing device. And if they unsubscribe from a partner email list, they will still receive race level emails. So if you're doing marketing that way, send marketing emails from your partner account, or then send from a race account. If you don't have a partner account, you can kind of get around it by setting up like a separate race, and then having a race level be using your email for your marketing communication through a race that way. Um, it's easier to manage it kind of by setting up that. But it's just kind of that thing to keep in mind that we do keep the unsubscribes at a race level. So you want to just understand that way you're working with that. Um, but they're also, if they unsubscribe after 2018 from that particular race, and then you start marketing 2019, they're still going to be unsubscribed. They're still going to be unsubscribed. And so one of the things we talked about a, a little bit before the sort of this etiquette is um, please, please, please do not keep a, an Excel spreadsheet of all of your email contacts on your computer and separately upload it to each race. <laughs> really bad. Because what happens is, is that so you upload it to one race, you send out an email, people unsubscribe from that email, and then you upload that contact list to your next race, and you send out an email, and then they're unsubscribed from that race, and it comes back, and they're, come, they're gonna come to you and say, stop emailing me, I've unsubscribed from your races five times, I'm still getting subscribed, I'm still getting emails, they're gonna get mad at you, they're gonna get mad at us, it's really just not a great situation. So what you want to do is if you have a list like that and you want to upload it, if we said scrubbing list, that can be painful, but what we do what we do is when you download a list from Run Sign Up, we will automatically unsubscribe or remove anyone from that list who has unsubscribed or marked your email as spam. So if you upload a list to one race and you send out an email and then you come back and you download that list from that race and then you go and re-upload that list to another race. That will be fine because you're downloaded that list from run sign up, so we've automatically scrubbed the spans and the unsubscribes from it for you. But that's sort of if you keep a file on your computer and you keep uploading it to every single race that you're working with, because we do that, we do this to protect you guys, right? You don't want somebody to unsubscribe from somebody else's race and not get your emails. Um, but that's sort of the caveat that comes with it, is that you just want to make sure that you're being careful when you're moving those between races. Which is why, again, if you have a partner account, use that for marketing, and then you don't have to worry about the list management. Okay, if you upload, in that partner example, if you upload new emails, would tag the ones that have already unsubscribed? Um, so, so, or add new emails. Yeah, so if people have already unsubscribed from your partner, partner account, oh, yes. and you upload yeah, adding it's, it's basically, it's a suppression list, if you will. So the, your partner, your races in your partner accounts will say, this is a list of people we will not send emails to. Mm -hmm. So if you upload a list of, a contact list, that person's still on the unsubscribe list. So if you send out from that list, they're still going to be unsubscribed. So... Is there a way to download the unsubscribe list? Like, like yep. if you're constantly getting new emails, like I'm building it every day, you know, you get 10 new emails or something mm -hmm. like that that aren't your part of your race. Is it, you know, when I when I download from my email, you know, from my email signups, I try to update my list like once every week or every two weeks because yep. I'm getting a bunch of new emails. So you're saying, I wouldn't know, I guess if I've never looked at the unsubscribe list, because they all subscribe to my list, so do I need to, when I re-upload that new one, download the unsubscribe and then just exclude so, them from my emails? So, when you, would be the best? so there's a couple of things. So when you, you have all the reports on who's marked unsubscribes and who's done spam reports, so we give you all that information, so you have that. And what I'm saying is that when you, if you don't have to constantly be downloading and uploading lists. It's really only when you're transferring contacts from one event to another event that you have to be careful. Because if they're unsubscribed from one race, they're not unsubscribed from the other race. So that's when you want to check. So they'll stay unsubscribed. They'll stay unsubscribed from your race. They don't get resubscribed if you upload Sorry, the list to your race. No, it's fine. So they're saying it's like a list of people who unsubscribe. Doesn't matter if they register again. Doesn't matter if they're uploading contact. If they've unsubscribed from that race. They will not receive emails. 
Um, so the only time you want to be careful is when you're saying, let me take my list, my list from my string race and transfer it to my fall race. Now again, if you're downloading the list from Run Sign Up, so you say, okay, I did my spring marketing, I'm gonna upload this list to my fall marketing, download that list from your spring race, we will automatically scrub it for you. Unsubscribe, spam reports, they will be pulled. So when you're downloading a list, a contact list from Run Sign Up, that is safe to use, that is perfectly fine to go ahead and upload to the next race, because we've already cleaned it for you. Because what you don't want to do is maintain your own email list outside of Run Sign Up and continually re-upload that to other races, that's where we run into problems. But other than that, we will do the cleaning, the unsubscribing, and all the other stuff. So day of registration. You have one online, I have day of registration. I send it to you, and you'll fill it in, or do I have to merge myself? Sorry, I'm sure I understand. Day of registration. Yes. I have all the information. Mm -hmm. I have your, your file, your, dash, your, your uh, spreadsheet that I've already downloaded, and, Name that as well. Do I add day of registration to your list or do I just send it to yourself? You could do either really, because if they're do race day register if they're race day registrants, they haven't unsubscribed really. They haven't had they've received the email communication to get into the system yet. So if you upload them into run sign up, you know, if they if they had happened to have unsubscribed, they're still on that list with the race, so we still we still wouldn't send them. When you download that list, we'll scrub automatically. Um, so if your race days aren't, aren't as big of a deal, really. You can keep those, and then when you go to upload that to another race, that should be fine. Um, it's really just, you know, people have an accumulation of all the races that you've ever worked with, and I've got this list of, cringed a little bit when you said 10-year-old email lists. <laughs> but it's the same idea. Like that Those are the things, those are where you get your red flags. When you have this list of, you know, 100,000 emails that I've been every participant who's been in my race for the last 10 years, and this person hasn't run in a race in eight years, and you're sending them email contacts, and it's just like, they're clearly they're not interested anymore. So just, you know, use some, um, like I said, this common etiquette when you're sending emails. Kind of try and take care of your list. Don't send to email people who haven't participated in your event in over five years. Um, you know, make sure you check for up drives and everything. I'm sorry, I'm kind of ad hocing this stuff here. Yeah, yeah we're time. four minutes past. That's why I have people scooping out. Uh, is there, when you, um, if I, so I'm new to the platform, mm -hmm. and I have 15 years of old race data, but I want to load in the platform so I can use statistics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. When you upload emails, is there a way to indicate, because I can, Bounce it off my current email distribution list, say who's unsubscribed and who's not. Because I don't want to, I don't want to re-email people that have already unsubscribed via this platform. Right. Can I indicate that when I do my upload of data? If you or have a list, separate? if you have a list of unsubscribed, you can upload that into our system as and well. We'll take them out. And we'll take them out. So basically, so our unsubscribed is like a suppression list. If they're on that list, we will not send them. So you can add to that list. You can add to that list. Yeah. You okay. say, cool. I've got my list of all my contacts. I've got my list of all my people who've unsubscribed. You don't have to manually go through and remove everything. You can say, let me add my unsubscribed list over here, and we'll do that. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we went a little bit over time, but. Thanks, Bert. Answer questions with your emails. <laughs>